Hi guys, my name is Adele Onyango and welcome to the first episode of Legally Clueless. No seriously, I have no clue what I'm doing and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one. Okay, so let me introduce myself. I am a Kenyan woman who has been on radio for the past nine years and you know, on the outside looking in, Radio kind of looks like one of those glamorous jobs that everybody would want. You can go to work in your pajamas, you work around music, you get to meet all of these celebrities, you get free tickets to all of these concerts, you are the plug to the plug. <laughs> you um, apparently have all the money in the world, which is not true, guys. You work at the station, you don't own it. And, you know, the outside looking in, it looks like the best job anybody could have and we look like we are super confident because every day when we get on our shows we have to perform it's a performance and you have to be happy you have to be confident and the longer you do it the better at it you get so that people believe that this is you all the time but it's really not. I think sometimes people forget that you have to deal with a lot of shit that comes with the job. You have to deal with being seen as a number and not an actual human being with feelings, emotions, and bad days and good days and dealing with like personal stuff. No, you're just the number of listeners you bring into this station. You also start feeling like, am I really worth it? In the space am i the best number bringer <laughs> to the table you know you're like what should i change about myself to become that good number bringer to the radio station and it kind of just messes with your mind a bit it does i think across the years i got to the point where i developed anxiety i think because of the setting that i was in where I'd get very anxious and question whether that was a good show I gave, whether that was a stupid question that I asked, have I prepped hard enough, am I on top of things, am I enough? And it spiraled into a very irrational um, anxiety that would, and still does, hit me every so often and I have to work through it, right? And not to mention the comparison. I think it's just a world where you get compared to those besides you, those coming behind you, those who were there before you. And again, there's no general understanding that you are an individual. You are like no one before you, no one besides you, and no one after you. Which is strange because you think in a, an industry that is based on personality that they get that, but there's not too much of that. And you get pitted against each other and you have to be very mentally strong to be able to hold your own and not compare yourself consistently to others. Because in doing that, then you kind of just lose who you are. And sometimes I slip up, sometimes I think I'm not doing enough and I look at other presenters and I'm like, oof, if only I could be as good as so and so, you know? And you start beating yourself down about it. Um, and it takes a lot to kind of like lift yourself from that, that dip and that hole that you've created for yourself. And I think it's also not a safe space. It's not a safe space. Because I think after nine years, this is the first time I'm genuinely opening up about it. Where internally there's either no time to you know share your emotions with anybody you also can't trust too many people that they could use what seems like your vulnerabilities against you it's just not a safe space but in trying to figure out how to exist in this space i would talk to my friends so i have a very small circle two people in my circle are my sisters so they have no choice they have to put up with me and be my friend and then i have two friends from university that's vanessa and barbara and then i have my best friend val and my little cousin stephanie and in you know, just sharing with them my honest emotions about my job and the space I work in. They had very similar situations and they are not in radio. They are not in media. They're in completely different fields and they have experienced similar, if not the same feelings. It might not be the same experiences per se, but the same feelings in their workspace. 
where you feel like you are in a space that's, for lack of another word, toxic. And, you know, I think sometimes we forget that as an adult who's working, work is kind of like what school was back in the day. And being in primary school or high school or even campus heavily influenced your day-to-day mood and how you saw things because 90% of your time was spent in that space. So if something was not happening right in um, your time in primary school, it would reflect a lot in your personality because you're there for such a long time. Same as when you're in high school, in campus. And so work is like that for us adults because we're there for a longer time than we are at home. Well, those of us who are like (laughs) not the owners of the company, you know, if you're not careful, and even if you are, it will start to sip into your day-to-day life. And if it's a healthy environment, and if it's a healthy space, then it impacts you positively. But if it's not, then oof, it's some messed up shit, right? I think legally clueless is something that many of us can relate to where we're really just winging it in life guys we're really just winging it and some of us are more confident about our winging it than others some of us put on the face of the performance because it's not just the radio presenters who are the performers some of us put this face of the performers on so well on the outside we look like we have everything figured out but i don't think any of us does Also because just rationally doesn't make sense. There's so much that is out of our control in life that there's no way you could plan 100% to the letter. Because life just does its thing (laughs) without asking us for permission. And it's just a realization, the older I get that, in order for me to really be content, I have to be at peace with not having my shit figured out without knowing exactly what the next step is going to look like but even in that just taking the first step nonetheless sometimes it looks like i'm confidently doing my projects or confidently launching things when in reality i just took the first step and then the second step came because if i didn't you know place it down and keep moving i'd topple over so it looks like i have my shit figured out but yo i'm just trying to you know balance everything out I think I just want to be more real in a safe space of my own about how clueless I am in different facets of life. And as I sat down thinking about it, having bought my podcast equipment without really knowing even what the hell I was going to use it for, having transformed the extra room in my apartment... Um, into like a makeshift studio. Even with all of that, I'm still winging it. And you know what? That's perfectly okay. So, so this podcast is really just a space for you and I to be as clueless as possible in a safe space and know that there's absolutely nothing wrong with us. And that's it for this episode of Legally Clueless. You can share this podcast with your friends. You can keep it for yourself. I'm not judging. Just make sure you're here next week for the next episode.